Hello well wishers I welcome you all to my YouTube channel Aspiring Minds and in today's video we are going to do the much much awaited topic that is a famous play by William Shakespeare called Julius Caesar and we are going to discuss the line by line meaning of act 1 scene 1 of the play so let us begin with a reading of the play Now as ICSC students it is very important to make note of the favorite question that the ICSC council often asks that is where does the scene take place the scene takes place in Rome a street The second favorite question that the ICSC council often asks is who are the main characters who are present in the scene so in act 1 scene 1 of Julius Caesar we see four important characters who are present in the scene we have the two tribunes namely flavius and marullus we have the first citizen and the second citizen you can see from the images flashing on your screen the first citizen by profession is a carpenter and the second citizen by profession is a cobbler Now that you've understood who are the important characters in act 1 scene 1 of the play you must be wondering who are the tribunes or why did i use the word tribunes for the characters flavius and marullus now the tribunes were people who were appointed by the common people of rome and they had a say in the important decisions and matters of importance they were the people who would protect the common citizens also known as the plebeians now another thing that might come to your mind is Who are these plebeians? Wait, wait! I'll let you know. Now, to understand who are plebeians, you will have to patiently look at the structure of Rome. The government at that time, when the play takes place, or in ancient Rome, was a republican form of government, also known as the Roman Republic. Now, this consisted of two classes or two types of people. The first were the patricians; they were the traditional aristocratic. people of high class society and the second category was the plebeians here belonged the people who were the common people of rome or the citizens of rome and the play julius caesar portrays or shows the conflict that constantly takes place between the high class people and the commoners and plebeians are actually who are the people who were the common people and the tribunes would be the spokes people the spokes persons for the common people initially they were only two in number who were appointed but later on the government decided to give a more accurate representation in the government and the number was increased from 2 to 8 tribunes So now begins the first scene of the play where Flavius is the first person who starts talking. He addresses remember the play is taking place in a street in Rome and here there are people who are roaming about freely. So he addresses the people who are roaming about in the streets telling them that you idle creatures get you home. He is telling them that today is not a holiday that has been declared. So why are these people roaming about on the streets and that too they are not wearing the badge or the sign of their profession. Technically all these people who are roaming about belong to some or the other profession. So in those days they were supposed to wear a badge which would signify what profession they belong to. But the people over here are just roaming about freely assuming that today is a holiday. But Flavius is very angry because he is saying that there is no reason for you to be calling today a holiday. It is a normal day where all the people are expected to go to their professional work. When Flavius asks the first citizen what trade art thou that is what trade do you belong to the first citizen answers that he is a carpenter by profession to this we see another character the another tribune coming up and speaking he is marullus then marullus asks that if you are a carpenter where is your leather apron and your rule that is if you are a carpenter you should be wearing an apron you should be wearing a badge which shows that you are a carpenter and you should also be having the ruler which a carpenter often carries along with him so why are you not having all that and apart from that instead of being in your uniform of your profession you are here wearing the best attire the best apparel the best clothes that you may be having in your closet you are wearing that and you are roaming about on the streets why are you doing that and then his glance falls on the second citizen and he asks the second citizen now what trade do you belong to so the second citizen says that he is a fine workman and he is a cobbler by profession 
At this time, Marilis asks for more clarity from the second citizen, and then he asks in a more, you know, detailed manner that answer me directly. That is, in details, tell me more about your profession. To this, the second citizen says that I belong to a trade, and if I have a clear conscience, that is, if my inner thoughts and actions are moral, are right, then I am a mender of souls. That is, I repair the souls of people. Now, over here, there is a pun on the word souls. The spelling is written as S O L E S because it is related to his profession. Technically, he is supposed to be mending the souls or repairing the souls of the shoes, but he is putting a pun over here. He is playing. up with marulus and he's saying that he actually repairs the souls the souls of people now to this you'll see that flavius gets very angry okay and he's further instigating and asking the second citizen that you naughty person you useless person instead of beating around the bush and not telling us directly can you please be more clear and give us more clarity about what is the exact profession you belong to that is why he uses the phrase naughty knave that means that you are a worthless person and you're just wasting our time by just you know talking in a roundabout manner so the second citizen at this time says that no no please don't get angry i'm requesting you sir be not annoyed with me whatever i'm doing is i my task is that i simply repair the soles of shoes but indirectly he is still hinting at the fact that he is uh, you know by profession a person who repairs the souls of people he's just playing up basically over here now again marulus gets a little angry and then he's saying what means down by that men me thou saucy fellow so you are saying i can understand so marilus is like don't try to play up with me i can understand your intention i know that you men souls but you think that me marilus i consist of or i have a bad soul and you are going to repair me so basically you see tribunes were more respected people right they were a little higher compared to a cobbler or a carpenter so being representatives of common people no doubt they were at a higher position and they should not be disrespected but over here the second citizen is indirectly disrespecting marulus and then marulus gets angry and says that what is wrong with me why do you think you need to mend me what is there in me that you as a cobbler will try to mend in me By this time the second citizen becomes alert that he has in some way or the other managed to offend Marulus okay so at this time he says why sir cobble you so indirectly he is saying that me as a citizen a just a normal cobbler what right do i have to cobble you or what is it that i can do to change you i am simply doing what i'm supposed to do that is that i repair shoes so here he uses the profession that he belongs to to save himself from not offending marulus any further to this flavius says thou art a cobbler art thou that means he says that you are a cobbler right so the second citizen says that yes i'm a co- cobbler and all that i live by is with the all that is if you see the meaning the word all means a sharp tool that is often used by the cobbler to make a hole in the leather so the second citizen is saying that i only practice my profession i have my tools which i make use of now remember the first citizen is supposed to be uh, the carpenter and he is supposed to be having his ruler the second citizen over here by himself proclaims that he lives by or he earns his living by the all that is a w l the tool that is used to make a hole in leathers and then he says that i only simply practice my profession i do not mess up with any man or any other woman if there is any woman that uh, you know a person likes i don't interfere and try to you know mess up with women but i only concentrate on my work that is whenever a person's shoes are in danger i go about and i repair their shoes for them and any person who has ever possessed or bought good shoes i am the person that has always been there to repair the shoes of any person be it a person of high class low class but they always wear shoes that are repaired by me that is the profession that i practice i do it with my utmost dedication so the second citizen after having convinced the tribunes about this flavius goes on to ask that why are you not in your shop today if you are a cobbler you are supposed to be in your shop and you know be there on duty but why are you not on duty and you're just roaming about on the streets like any other person today 
again second citizen has got some strain of humor okay so he's saying that truly sir to wear out their shoes so he's saying that purposely i'm out over here like more people and i would want more people to be out on the streets so that their shoes would be worn out or their shoes would tear apart and i would get more customers who would come to me and get their shoes repaired but then he says that indeed sir we make holiday today to see caesar and to rejoice in his triumph that is that they are out on the streets today and not on their duty because they have come to all have a glimpse a glance of caesar because he is returning back today and they all want to celebrate in the victory of julius caesar now comes the most important speech of this scene that is the speech of marulus as a tribune he is saying that why are you rejoicing what is it that's making you so happy and you're celebrating the return of julius caesar because when he's coming back he's not bringing back any gains or any profitable deals for rome so why are you you know being so happy you're leaving your work you're not on duty and you're just roaming about on the streets over here to get a glimpse of julius caesar and then he says that what tributaries follow him to rome to grace in captive bonds his chariot wheels that is what compelled you to pay tribute or to pay your respect to julius caesar because you are over here you are trying to decorate the presence by you know decorating the wheels of the chariot on which julius caesar will be returning there is technically no reason for you to be doing that and then he addresses these commoners in a very direct manner and he insults these commoners by telling you blocks you stones you worse than senseless things that is you people are fools you all have no brains of your own you all are just roaming about on the streets your hearts are hard you are the cruel men of rome you have no loyalty don't you know some time back pompey the previous ruler had come over here and many a time and oft have you climbed up walls and battlements that is in the past when pompey had come over here you had climbed the tops of the walls the buildings any kinds of forts which were over here to the tops of chimneys some of you would even have your little babies in your arms and then you would be waiting entire day just to get one glimpse of pompey when he would be passing from the streets of rome and when you would see the chariot of pompey up here all of you would shout all together in a universal shout or that means well would all shout together to cheer up for the return of pompey so your shout would be so loud that the river tiber which would be flowing through this you know rome it would also start trembling or shaking because of the echo of the sounds that would be made by your universal shout so that is how you would welcome pompey in the past and today you are coming here to do the same thing for caesar The speech of Marius continues and he continues to insult the commoners by saying that instead of being on your duty you are here roaming about on the streets of Rome and not just that you are out here in the best of your clothes that you have in your closet and apart from that you are declaring today as a holiday who told you all that today is a holiday and you all can take a day off and just be here to you know welcome julius caesar and then apart from that he says and do you now strew flowers in his way that comes in triumph over pompey's blood so he's saying that not just that you all are also you know scattering flowers on the way for julius caesar to come about for someone who has just become victorious he has been able to gain victory by killing pompey the very person whom you had welcomed some time back then he gets very angry and he says be gone that is just go away from here stop being here to welcome julius caesar and what are the instructions he gives this is a very important part of this speech the instructions that marius gives to the commoners are that go home run to your houses fall on your knees they should bend down on their knees and they should pray to the gods so that if there is any curse if you have made the gods angry in any way by shifting your loyalty from pompey to caesar if any god has got angry pray as much as you can so that god does not punish us in any way for this act of unkindness this act of you know being ungrateful to your previous ruler and shifting your loyalty from pompey to caesar 
here is a map for you of Rome and I have brought this out specifically to show you the exact location of River Tiber. Now Rome is located on the banks of River Tiber and this river actually flows through the city. It is located on the seven hills which made it easy to defend. The hills which were there if you've always seen if that whenever there are mountains or hills it becomes easier for the country who is trying to defend itself to you know have a look at the approaching of the enemies so that is why the location of rome has always been ideal whenever there has been any kind of war by which rome was affected Sometime back we saw that Marius was giving a speech where he was instructing the commoners to do something so that you know God doesn't punish them anymore now Flavius also as a tribune tries to rectify the wrong done by the commoners by giving them more instructions he is in a very tactful manner telling them to convince them he calls them good countrymen this is a contrast now when Marius was talking to the commoners he was insulting them on the other hand when Flavius is talking to the commoners he is calling them good countrymen and he's saying that it's okay you've done a fault but what you can do is go and assemble or gather all the other people like you who are roaming about on the streets tell them to go to the bank of river tiber and over there you should cry you should cry so much that the tears from your eyes fall into the river and that will make the level of river tiber rise and that is how you will be able to purge or you will be able to rectify the wrong done by you so the commoners they get very convinced and there is an instruction given that all the commoners they exit from the scene and then flavius and marius continue talking over here he says that see how these people are these commoners they don't have a mind of their own their nature how it is so easy to manipulate their minds they are they know they've done a mistake and that is why quietly they are just moving about because of being guilty and now they are heading towards capital where they are going to be there and then he says that you and i we need to do something he says this way will i flavius says that i'm going to go in a particular direction and he is going to take off all the decorations which were put up in order to welcome julius caesar remember that flavius and marius do not want julius caesar to come back on the throne that is why they are doing all these kind of things of trying to brainwash the commoners trying to take out all the decorations so that julius caesar does not feel happy he does not feel welcomed when he comes over here to rome now when flavius says that this is what he is going to do of removing all the decorations or the statues which have been put up to welcome julius caesar marius is in doubt he says maybe do so is it right for us to do so and why does that doubt arise because first of all julius caesar is already getting a lot of popularity from the commoners and another reason he says is that you know it is the feast of lupercal today is an important festival that we are celebrating apart from the return of julius caesar so on a day when we are all supposed to be having a celebration is it at all right for us to be taking off the you know decorations uh, from the city all around now i'll be telling you about the feast of lupercal in just a minute so why does that doubt arise in the mind of marius about you know doing that task that flavius has told of removing the decorations because it's the feast of lupercal why is it important now every year on 15th of february feast of lupercal was celebrated in ancient rome it is actually celebrated to honor lupercus he was the god of shepherds the festival is said to be a very violent and bloody festival and why is this festival so important because romulus and remus these were the people who were the founders of rome and it is said that a wolf had actually taken care of them in a cave so the festival is celebrated to honor the god of shepherds and flocks and the festival was held near the cave of lupercal to purify new life and spring and also to honor that good deed which had been done in years past by a wolf Now the last speech of Flavius is very important because to Marius he replies that it doesn't matter whether there's any feast of lupercal or any festival that we're celebrating today because our main priority today should be to remove all the decorations which have been put up to honor Caesar in this way 
uh, you know they will be able to bring down his popularity he says that he is going to go around and he also tells marilus when he is going around removing all the decorations they both should drive the vulgar away from the streets that is if they see any other commoner that they come across they should constantly keep manipulating and brainwashing them to you know not shift their loyalty from pompey to caesar because in this way it will be like they are plucking the wings of the bird just as uh, you know when you pluck the wings of a bird it restricts the bird from flying very high that is exactly what is supposed to be done to the commoners so that when julius caesar comes over here he will not be able to soar high he will not be able to fly high like a bird when the decorations are removed his wings will be plucked and he will be here flying at a normal height at an ordinary height that is all the growing popularity and the increasing power of caesar all that will come down and he will be at a normal level his mind will not be soaring too high he will not feel very you know exalted very happy at this act of being welcomed so well and in that way they will also be able to have a greater control over the commoners who will be you know bending themselves or they'll be in servile fearfulness now what does survive servile fearfulness mean over here that is they will be able the commoners will be able to stay in a state of fear and they will always obey the instructions of the tribunes in this manner now what are some of the important things that we come across when we read act 1 scene 1 of the play number 1 it introduces us to the key characters of the play number 2 it establishes the political and social context that is the setting of the play number 3 it sets up the central conflict of the play or it brings out the central idea of the play number 4 it foreshadows the future events that is it tells us or it shows us what is it that we can expect from the play in the future and number 5 it explores the important themes of the play that is loyalty ambition and betrayal now this scene actually lays the foundation for what is to you know come in the future i will be discussing the importance of the act 1 scene 1 of the play in my upcoming video so do stay tuned i hope this video was useful for you guys i'll see you in my upcoming video with more interesting topics related to julius caesar of, of william shakespeare so do stay tuned thank you for watching bye